Hey friends! If you clicked on this video, then you're probably looking for an at-home screen printing method to create your own printed fabric that's totally custom, and that is exactly what you're going to get. I'm going to walk you through the method that I like to use for printing fabrics because it is cheap, it is reusable, and it's really quick and um, a little bit precise for layering, but that's a topic for the next video. Anyways, I am printing this fabric specifically to be used for a Lolita Anyways, I'm printing this fabric specifically to be used for a Lolita dress, but this method works just fine for whatever sewing you happen to be doing. And like you're about to see, you have total control of the final design, with a few parameters to work around, but we'll get to that in a minute. That's enough of me talking, I'm sure that you're really anxious to get to the tutorial, so I'll just uh, fade to black? Yeah, fade to black. So I wanted to walk you through my whole thought process here. So I took some printer paper and I marked out the width that I wanted my diamond shape to be as well as the length. And then I connected my corners to make a very nice diamond shape. Now I took a second piece of paper and I layered that on top and I traced my diamond shape, at least just the corners, because I knew that I wanted my corners to be part of the design. This would hint at a diamond without creating a full stencil that was just one diamond. Then I designed this little skull. Because I'm taking subtle inspiration from Thriller Bark, which is a one-piece arc, I wanted there to be a Jolly Roger just kind of easter egged into the design, although this really isn't an easter egg so much as the highlight of the design, but still, you get my point. My first design wound up being way too piratey. It literally looks like a pirate map. So I wound up for the second design simplifying a little bit. I kept the elements I really liked, like my skull and crossbones and my little corner caps, but I only kept one of my cardinal directions. So the top and bottom arrow, but I didn't include the side arrows because it screamed compass. I also removed my little um, walking lines because those looked like they came straight off of a treasure map. Before I start cutting out my stencil, I cover the whole thing in tape, being sure to overlap the design just slightly so that no paper is exposed. This strengthens my design and makes it so that I can use my stencil more than once. It also makes it waterproof so I can wipe paint off of it if I need to. Now with a pen knife or an X-Acto knife, go in and cut out the very edges of your design. I find it helpful to flip over and go from the back because then I can see where my cut line was if it didn't go through all the way. Corners are occasionally tricky because pieces will try to stick. If you happen to tear or make a cut that goes too far, you can always cover it with just a tiny bit of clear tape. Notice how the bones don't connect all the way to the jawbone. If you make your little holes in your design too large, sometimes um, it'll lift off of your piece and be really hard to stamp with. Now let's put that stencil to work. The first thing we're going to do is measure the width of our stencil, and we're going to make a grid line that is exactly the width of that stencil going all the way across vertically. Pay special attention to the grain of your fabric as well as you can. As you saw, I had my little helper making things a little bit hard for me. Okay, so I just did the tedious process of marking my guidelines. Um, I'm only doing vertical guidelines and not horizontal ones because I think that I trust myself to line my tips up on one dimension. Like I don't think that I need to make a solid grid. Um, but we'll see. I might tell you that that was a horrible mistake. <laughs> um, I mostly don't want to do the full grid because it will be so time consuming and this is already going to be like five hours of my life. So, trying to minimize the amount of uh, man hours going into this. So my concept for my Harlequin skull pattern is that it's going to kind of dissipate as it goes down and fades into the border print. My original design featured eight rows of Harlequin diamonds, and you see they kind of break apart toward the bottom, but I don't really have the space for all of those. So I have six rows I just measured. 
And so with six rows, it's going to look a little bit more like this. And this is going to be the top of my skirt here. Possibly here. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to look really cool. Like the more that I'm looking at it, I really, I really like it. I'm only going to do a yard of the full print and then I'm going to do guidelines for just the bottom half of the print. Um, this is because I don't want to print <laughs> a full four yards of fabric and I have a couple of projects to go with this dress that I want the non-printed fabric for. For example, my headpiece that I'm going to be making, I would like my fabric to be unprinted for that. Um, and I might make some old school leg warmers. I know they're really hokey and cheesy, but I kind of want a pair. <laughs> I'm almost completely out of my non-pearlescent black, my just standard black, from when I did the Orcus' shirts. So I'm going to just be mixing some of my silver straight into the matte black and making like a dark silver with a little bit of pearlescent to it, but not like a ton. Um, so like my goal is for it to be slightly less shiny than the gates and I think that I can pull that off. So yeah, time to do that. Let's go. As it turns out, the silver was not enough to brighten up the black and I had to add a little bit of pearlescent white. Actually more than a little bit of pearlescent white. I lined my diamonds up, making sure that I could see my chalk lines in both corners. And then I would take my little handy dandy makeup sponge that I was holding onto with a clothespin and tap the paint right in. It's important to make sure that you don't have too much paint on your sponge or you can overload it and that will make your um, edges of your stencil look a little bit globby, for lack of a better word. Basically, this just happens when there's too much paint in your stencil and it winds up flowing onto your fabric in weird blobs. Also, the reason why I'm using a clothespin and not my fingers to hold onto the sponge is because it will get a little bit dirty, and I want my fingers to be clean so that whenever I touch my fabric or other things, I'm not getting paint on them. This is a mistake that I've made in the past, and it's a little bit heartbreaking to ruin something before you even finish it just by getting a stain that you can't get off. While these paints are water-soluble, there really isn't an easy way to erase any mistakes. So it's better to just avoid them in the first place. Now I had my full yard of the full print done, and I just needed to do another three yards of the dissipated part. The remaining three yards went relatively quickly. This was because I had fewer rows and fewer diamonds. It did take me longer to figure out how to line my diamonds up, though. I wound up drawing little invisible lines with my finger from one corner to the other to help me visualize where they were going. In the end, I'm just really happy that it turned out how I was picturing it in my head. And thanks to my glass tabletop, cleanup went really easy. I just took some scrubbing bubbles and a microfiber cloth and it was easy work. Incredibly satisfying. Also, don't forget to set your paint. For the paint that I'm using, it needs to be heat set, so I'm just ironing my fabric. I am so happy with these results. I didn't realize that my little corners were going to make X's like that, but I love how it looks. See, now wasn't that fun? Now, hopefully I've empowered you to try this out for yourself. And if you do, I would love to see it. Uh, you can tag me on Instagram at MayaGraceSews, or you can email me at MayaGraceSews at gmail.com. Whatever floats your goats. And if you liked this video, you should stick around for next week's video because we're going to be doing a border print with 25 stencils. Very exciting. Anyways, that's all from me, and I'll see you next week. Bye, friends! Hmm. This is harder to do with those. Gripped. Pa, 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 pa. Now, hopefully try... So, please tag me at... Um, oh,